On today's show, The Incredibles 2 could have Pixar's biggest opening ever. Vin Diesel's Bloodshot is a movie and adds cast members. And Bob Fett and the Cloud City Rollers get their own motion picture. Movie Talk starts right now. That'd be my name for Boba Fett and his band if they were a 1970s funk band. They're not. He's just a bounty hunter. And this is just Movie Talk. I'm Mark Ellis. That is Andres Ace Cabrera from the Meaning Of podcast. And that is Clee Wiggins, most recently of Thugs, the musical. (laughs) So excited to have you all be panelists today. And I'm even more excited because I was made aware, pretty sure, that both y'all saw the Solo movie last night. Clee, your quick five-second take on Solo, a Star Wars story. I thought it was gorgeous and lush. Um, (laughs) No, I really liked it. I I, I went in with very low expectations because of all the rumors coming out of that set, and but kisses fingers like a chef. All right, she's blowing it. Kisses like she just <laughs> had a nice meal at Morton Steakhouse. Was this Morton's quality for you, Andres? Uh, not quite, but it was still a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I as well came in with low expectations, so yeah. the fact that it was a pretty good Star Wars movie is enough for me. So, All right, well, yeah. reduce your expectations. That's the key to life, kids. Well, we <laughs> kick off with a story that is set in the Star Wars universe. A new movie was announced that's going to be centered around Boba Fett, everybody's favorite Mandalorian bounty hunter, and it's going to be directed by Logan and the Wolverine's James Mangold. Hey, this news comes on the dawn of a new Star Wars release featuring Han Solo. Isn't that a crazy coincidence? I don't think this is an accident. All this story came out recently from The Hollywood Reporter. First is that the Boba Fett movie is announced the same week as a Han Solo movie is coming out in theaters. It just gooses more excitement in the Star Wars universe. And I got to admit, I saw the story and I got really pumped for a second because Boba Fett is one of the coolest looking characters in Star Wars history. And then the monkeys in my brain started thinking about it. And I was like, I, I don't know if I still need a Boba Fett standalone movie. And yes, I'm the same guy that said this about the Han Solo movie. And then I saw the marketing. And I got really excited. And by the time the Solo premiere was afoot, I got pumped to see the Han Solo movie. I have no doubt the same thing is going to happen with me with Boba Fett. I'm an unapologetic Star Wars fan, but I don't need this movie, and I don't really want this movie. I think this would have been better served as a Netflix serial than a standalone movie, because Boba Fett is a character that, when we were kids, we grew up saying, oh, that's a bad guy, because he's going up against Han and Luke and our good guys. Boba Fett's a bounty hunter, okay? He's like Dog the Bounty Hunter. He just gets jobs, and he goes out, and he tries to punish. He doesn't care if they're good guys or bad guys. He's just making a buck in outer space. That's fine. And that's a cool story to tell. But Boba Fett doesn't talk at all. And I don't want to see him talk at all. I don't want to see him take the helmet off because it just, you have cool mystique from characters. And that's what Boba Fett has traded on since 1980 is that we have no idea what the hell is really going on there. When we did get a brief glimpse of in the prequels, we're like, oh, he's a kid and that's cute. And he's holding his daddy's head. I just don't need to see this movie, even with James Mangold directing, even with the fact that I really did like Solo. I don't need a Boba Fett movie. I don't know if Star Wars fans want one. Clee Wiggins, do you want a Boba Fett movie? Your shirt is saying yes. <laughs> <laughs> my, yeah, my shirt and my purse. Um, I do. Uh, I do think net, a Netflix series treatment would be better, but because you could sort of do it atmospherically a little bit more easier, and that's Boba Fett is more of an atmospheric like character to me. But I do, I am here for it. I'm here for it, 100. Do you think that this movie should feature Boba Fett in the same way that like Solo it features Han Solo? There's a lot of ancillary really characters around, see, though. I don't really want to see a bunch of origin necessarily. I sort of just want to see Boba Fett side missions. Like, what's he doing when he's not p- p- being hired out by the Empire? <laughs> sort of like because I read the Bounty Hunter series of Star yeah. Wars Star Wars books, and those are great books. If you're a Boba Fett fan, even though it's like all that stuff is not necessarily canon, although the Solo movie pulled in a lot of stuff from the books which was amazing um that's a great series of there's only three of them and they're quick reads yeah it, it'll get you excited to see adventures of bounty hunters which is why i yeah. think a netflix series just a netflix series because then you could bring in boss and ig88 yeah. and all that stuff and it would be amazing that job interview that darth vader has in yeah. empire strikes back where <laughs> yeah. it's just all of them around that's the movie or that's yeah. the serial that i want to see and ace uh, christian and i talked about this many times on schmoes and on our Harlow finella show where it's like we want to see that like dark underworld of like what goes on with the day-to-day of a bounty hunter but with boba fett in particular i just don't want to see him go off on a mission take his helmet off and be like Buh, what a day that was like i yeah. just i just want to see him be this kind of weird fly on the wall character yeah if for me i would be more excited about this movie if i felt that lucas film was more unafraid to take risks 
so far what we've seen with the Kathleen Kennedy new Lucasfilm, they don't seem like they want to take big yeah, risks. Yeah, they haven't gone way They haven't. I mean, the reason why they out. reshot... But this would be the character to do that Yeah, with. but the reason why they reshot I Talked to You Beforehand, uh, Rogue One, was because it was too dark. This mm -hmm. is literally a bounty hunter who kills people for money. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not much darker you can get. Do we really trust the new Lucasfilm people to be like, yeah, let's have a guy shoot a guy and then sell toys. It's like, mm. I don't know if this is going to sell that many toys if you have Boba Fett, like, I don't know, shooting people and, and killing. If they gave it the like, Deadpool R-rated treatment, that would See, be but you, you don't see that in a Star yeah. Wars. If they do, that'd be great. You would I, I would see be that down. in a Star Wars. I don't think Disney. you're ever going to get an R-rated Star Wars movie, but they did hire a guy who did a pretty good R-rated version of a yeah. comic book movie with James Mangold being the guy who did Logan, yeah. and that was just the most violent comic book movie. I mean, there's claws going through a guy's skull. It also had a heartfelt tinge to it. I don't think you're going to get... I don't know how you do that with Boba Fett. That's, James Mangold, is he the right guy to be doing this? Yeah, that's the thing, right? Because the pitch is great. It's James Mangold, mm -hmm. the guy... He's done Westerns before. He just did Logan, which is one of the best R-rated superhero yeah. movies. Probably the best R-rated superhero movie. So it seems exciting, but again, those limitations are put beforehand. The reason why he wanted an R rating for Logan was so he can have freedom. That's the biggest thing he wanted. Even more than the blood and guts, he just wanted freedom. To be able to, to say... Theme yeah, to explore themes to say the words he wants to say but with this movie you have so many people so many hands and we've seen so many directors fall off already off the Lucasfilm train mm -hmm. that I feel like there's only so much you can do and I, I'm still kind of optimistic towards it because I kind of want to see a western Boba Fett movie I think that'd be kind of fun but at the same time I'm cautiously optimistic because I don't feel that following a villain is as promising as people want it to be. Do you want to see a Western Boba Fett movie or do you want to see a Western Star Wars movie that has Boba Fett in it? That's an, that's because that's the big question. Is like 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 does Boba Fett need to be the one that's front and center, or could you have wedged Boba Fett into this Obi Wan movie that keeps being talked about but not really ever confirmed See, yet? And that Obi Wan movie, not here for it. Oh, I'm I'm here for it. I'm not. <laughs> Give I'm me like, that Obi Wan. We've movie. already seen what we need to know about Obi Wan. No. Like I don't need uh, young Obi Wan. We already got you and McGregor doing that poorly, and oh. it's deeply disappointing. You mean morning for the greatest so the greatest Star Wars character ever is Obi-Wan Kenobi and Ewan McGregor is amazing as Obi-Wan Kenobi. I think an Obi-Wan movie would be perfect. I mean, he did his best. He, he would. He would best. He's the best part of the prequels. He would <laughs> he bridge. I, thought, I think he can bridge the gap between the fandom right now, especially how toxic the fandom is for Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I think he can bring in the fans of the prequels, this guy right here, the fans of the originals who liked Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi. Him and Darth Maul are the best things about those prequels. Yeah, and he would bring in a new audience. But I'm, I'm with you. Like, Why don't we kind of put those two movies together? Why don't we see... I, I told you beforehand, we might see like these kind of new little spinoff films kind of be connected. Yeah, you kind of be in the same take period. on it that, that we brought up, that Ace brought up in our in our pre-production yeah. meeting before y'all started arguing about who should play Boba Fett, which we'll get into in a second. <laughs> yeah. Is that, yeah, that w without giving away any spoilers, I think the Han Solo movie opens itself up to obviously more adventures, and Alden Ehrenreich has reported is signed for three movies. Now, whether that, that happens all the time, I mean, Felicity Jones was signed for three movies. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see her again in a Star Wars movie, although she was great in Rogue One. It's just that if you have a Han Solo movie, then that ends, and that movie kind of passes the spiritual lead baton to a bounty hunter like Boba Fett, yeah. and then that movie could factor into the origin of an Obi-Wan movie. It'd be interesting, is Boba Fett the next movie that should be lined up? Because Ace, it seems like you would rather see the Obi-Wan movie come here and now. Yes, give me Obi-Wan first. I can see Boba Fett happening, but I feel like Obi-Wan should be first. But I, I told you beforehand, like, what if this new, like, period between episode three and episode four what if it's like a little mini trilogy what if you know the scum and villainy scoundrels and villainy type yeah. of people like a Han Solo like a Boba Fett and like a Obi-Wan on Tatooine dealing with the scum and villainy is like a new little mini trilogy spin-off film that we see from Star Wars I mean it wouldn't be terrible I mean Solo wasn't terrible so <laughs> maybe we can see the good of Solo kind of have like a gangster type feel and Boba Fett is a part of that are you buying this scum and villainy trilogy I do and I think we did agree sort of we agreed on that earlier <laughs> when we were talking earlier before the show um, I do think that Boba Fett though is sort of the spiritual sequel to Solo so I do see it why it should be next as far as the Star Wars story set of movies go as do far you, as in, yeah, do you also agree with Ace that, that Star Wars isn't taking risks because I mean I, I, I do and one. I wish they would like uh, like I said I wish they if they did a, an R rated or or had the freedom to go for an R rated Boba Fett movie then that movie would be okay I'm I'm 
really 100% all about it. But they won't do it because it's not Disney gonna do it. and they want to be it's taking Disney pictures and at, they want to be Disney able to Land. put a Boba Fett ride like, at I, I remember like or walking California out of, Adventure or something. Yeah, because I remember walking <laughs> out of uh, Force Awakens and all my friends were like, wouldn't it be awesome if Rey became a villain? And I'm like, she's a Disney princess. She's yeah. She's not yeah. going to be a villain. You can take pictures with her at Disneyland. Yeah. I mean, I don't it, see her. That's a risk. I, I look at the last Jedi. That would be a risk. a lot of risks too. And, and, and last Jedi, maybe some fans might say that all the risks didn't pay off. I would say Rogue One is a monster risk because you go and I know they reshot the ending, but it that ending can only be made so much happier. We're still getting deep impact at the end, and it's not. Yeah, the ending cool was ending dumb, life. and it's really the only reason to watch Rogue One is so you can get to that last five minutes of leading up to a, a New Hope. Yeah, which, I, is, I, which, which is like to this day, like my favorite thing about Star Wars is finally seeing what happened before he walked through that door. But other why than that, they were the so of, afraid of Darth Vader? Yeah, the and you're just like, oh, because he was, <laughs> like, he was thrusting fools everywhere. <laughs> and then, then, they, then the force ship thrust, comes force, into the beginning of New Hope, out. and he's just like, you know Chill. what? I'm tired. The stormtroopers <laughs> can go knock this yeah. one out. He's like, I've never done that before, but whatever. <laughs> no, for me, it's like we won't see what the actual risk taking is until we see what J.J. Abrams completes of Ryan Johnson. I feel like what Ryan Johnson set up in the in the new trilogy can be great. Yeah, but we won't know until we see the. J.J. Abrams wants. My problem is the whole point of the spinoff films was to have something risk-taking, something unique, something that's a little bit more like stepping on people's toes, whether mm -hmm. it be a super comedy like we were going to get with a Phil Lord and Chris Miller, or like you said, like an R rating, maybe not R rating, but maybe something very much darker, maybe a more adult-oriented Star Wars movie. Yeah, I'm of the belief that I, I think that the, the town and ability supersedes what a movie rating will do is that I think that I think that Logan could have been a great movie PG-13. I see the movie and, I'm, and it was nice mm -hmm. that it had the R rating and it was nice that it had the freedom. Same thing with Deadpool. I think a Star Wars movie never needs to be rated R. I think you can do enough without actually showing an excessive amount of blood or having a lot of F-bombs or boobs in there. I think you can pull it off PG-13. I just don't think that I need a Boba Fett movie, and it is something I'm going to get excited about. And I'm allowed to say that as a Star Wars fan, <laughs> that I'm going to go see this movie opening night. Hopefully I get to go to some screening beforehand. Then we're going to see it three times opening weekend like I'm going to do with Solo right now. But a Boba Fett movie, not at the top of my list. If I put you all at, the, at, at a multiplex, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give you a number of options, and mm -hmm. I say you can either go in and you can check out Ryan Johnson's new trilogy that was mm -hmm. announced or the Benioff and Weiss, the Game of Thrones guys, mm -hmm. what they're doing with the Star Wars movie or I give you an Obi-Wan movie or Boba Fett one. Of those four theaters, which one are you walking into? Boba. I'm going with, with my boy. Boba the best character in Star Wars. <laughs> I'm going with Obi-Wan Kenobi. I, wow, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm entirely convinced that oh, this is... I'm telling you guys, rewatching the prequels as a prequelist myself, I, I love Ewan McGregor's role as Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I feel like those adventures, that's 20 year gap between three and four. There's so much potential in there. And, and, and people want to see Ewan return as Obi-Wan Kenobi. But like, we all know what he was doing in them 20 years. He was he's living kicking ass, man. in a fucking sand igloo. No, he's <laughs> kicking ass. I agree. Taking more names. Names. He was, he, he was able to kick ass, but when we meet him in A New Hope, He's not been doing a lot for a yeah. long if time. You, hey, he's like man, a Obi Wan if you Kenobi. Watch Rebels, I forgot you know all about that. Name. I watch Rebels and I see this thing, the, the stuff that goes on in Rebels, and I'm like, you're, you're kind of getting dangerously close to, you know, massaging the lore a little too much of what yeah. this character was that we meet him in a new. I don't hope, need to. I don't need to be watching Obi Wan Kenobi gardening his succulents. I want to see <laughs> Obi Wan in the desert. <laughs> I want to see Obi-Wan taking names and kicking ass or kicking names and taking ass. I'm, I'm going to be excited to see both <laughs> movies when they come out. The only real pushback I have against this before we move on is that Ace, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, great character. R2-D2 is the best character in mm. Star Wars history. Sorry, that is just the way it's going to go. Yeah, um, we on have to move on, to unfortunately, from Star Wars. We could talk about the Boba Fett movie all day. I could day. literally talk about it all day. Um, <laughs> and it's exciting, and, and this is one of those things that I hope continues to at least spawn more conversation in a positive way about Star Wars movies, that I don't know that I that I wanted it, we're getting it, and that's what that's what we're saddled with, Ace. Yeah, yeah, and no, I was just going to say real quick, if they do do that, Please cast a New Zealand actor. No, I think, to play Boba Fett. Yes, because I think it's a, I think it's important to keep. <laughs> hey, if George Lucas reconned it, it's reconned for a reason. I have a Jango Fett action figure that I still have that I bought when I was a kid from Attack of the Clones. I think it's important for that character to. to I mean, Tamora Morrison is a Maori New Zealand actor, and I think there's so many great New Zealand actors. We see so many movies shot in New Zealand. We see so many shows shot in New Zealand. There's great talent there. Look at Taika Waititi. Look at what he's done in Hollywood already. I think it would be a huge misstep to not cast a younger version of a Tamara Morrison, New Zealand, Maori, Polynesian actor. There's so many great actors.
actors. I love them. I love Manu Bennett. He is my <laughs> Maori husband. Amazing. Okay, Wouldn't I would leave Ed for him in a second. But no, I, that every time I watch the redos of Empire and he has a, he has a New Zealand accent, it pulls me right out of the movie. Oh, I grew I up it. on the original trilogy with the original cut, and I hate it. Oh no! And I love them. They're they're a fine you, people. You made my point for me. Kiwis. A man who Bennett, who plays uh, Crixus from Spartacus, yeah. Kiss, who plays uh, De- He's on Arrow uh, and uh, Arrow. Uh, yeah, he plays uh, De- not Deathstroke from from Arrow. He's great. He's super intense. He's, he's awesome. Powerful. That would be amazing. He's like no. super Jack too, though, right? Like, yeah, like, he's that's Jack. perfect. <laughs> Boba Fett. Boba Fett's I imagine, more he's slender because Boba Fett's all about his weapons. He's not really about hand. Yeah, Boba Fett's just like kind of like a lanky, you know, like like he's 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 uh, like a no. five foot. He's basically Boba like Fett's me. built like you underneath all that armor. <laughs> Like he's five he's foot a, seven, hundred and thirty pounds. But he's but he's armed to the teeth. Yeah. Okay, Arms well now I can't really just get out of my head the idea of Taika Waititi actually playing Boba Fett. Or, okay, if Taika hey, Waititi's not playing Boba Fett, if he's playing somebody um, in that world, like like who he was in Thor Ragnarok, just like mm-hmm. a little side character. Okay, yeah. stop getting me excited about this movie, Ace. I told you I was going to be You just buried. see him in a helmet being like, hey man, it's Boba. No, <laughs> Boba. see, no. No, 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 no. This is Pile of Rooks waving at you, Boba Fett. <laughs> All right, look, we're going di- to disagree in the Boba Fett movie until the cows come home. Well, e- Disney and Pixar do have a new movie coming out, as you might expect they seem to have one every week but the one that's coming out in june the incredibles 2 is now tracking pretty high at the box office it's looking right now at 140 million dollar plus debut and you guys know how i feel about box office tracking i don't really buy it at all Mm -hmm. and a lot of times i think the tracking actually undersells what the movie could do but this would be a monumental opening the best opening ever for a pixar movie domestic opening weekend is finding dory and you can expect why it'd be finding dory it's because the movie came out pretty recently and so ticket sales have been a little higher. You adjust for inflation. That movie pulled in $135 million opening weekend at the box office. Klee, does your excitement for Incredibles 2 transfer over to the rest of America's? Are we going to make oh, this yeah. the I'm here biggest for Pixar opening? Spirit thinkers for <laughs> Incredibles 2. Um, I, hear, I mean, and there are people who were children when the first one came out who are adults who are just like, those other children need to get out of my way because I've been waiting for this movie since I'm 13. So I'm here for Incredibles 2. It's my favorite Pixar movie of all time. I watch it a lot. And so I'm... I'm and I'm ready to see what Jack Jack is going to do. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think I want that, all of Jack Jack's powers to just be just off the chain. It's a, it, it's a <laughs> great point you make because, like, we were like, well, I wasn't a, a child. I actually I actually went on a date to see The Incredibles. The reason why yeah. I took her to see The Incredibles is because she wanted to see The Incredibles, and I wanted to see the Revenge of the Sith trailer that was <laughs> debuting with The Incredibles. So we <laughs> went midnight. Nerd. We both had yeah. a great time, and I was like, yeah, you see, that, that's uh, that's that's most of far. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that this movie, uh, the, but the Klee, uh, uh, Klee's point, I think, resonates, Ace, because yeah. you have a Pixar movie that uh, y- you can think Pixar movies are aimed for kids. They're not, but they certainly have that appeal because they're animated. Yeah. But now you have multiple generations that all want to see that movie. Probably the same way that Finding Dory was so successful. Yeah. It's because Finding Nemo came out so long ago. So where you have and a live action even bigger fear, gap. Yeah, because you, you have a movie like, like Dumb and Dumber 2, and it's mm-hmm. like, uh, it, it, can they pull it off still? Zoo Ender 2, can they pull it off still? Here, you don't have to worry about that stuff because it's animated and we just get to continue these adventures with these characters do you see it the way Klee does that this is going to break Pixar records yeah I mean think about it it came out in 2005 if I'm correct right I was 14 Four. mm-hmm. yeah I think it was 14 in 2004, 2004 yeah. so I was like 14 Jeez. years old in 2005 so yeah it's been a while but for me I, I watched this trailer again last night um, right before Solo came on and, and I literally thought the same thing I thought it's crazy how people grew up with this movie and they mm-hmm. watched it when they were kids and now they're kind of older watching it and how many new kids are going to come into the franchise and kind of see it for the first time like I can mm-hmm. see so many seven year olds watching this movie where like they weren't watching it the first time because they weren't really around Yeah, but it's crazy how you can get old fans on board and new fans on board based on new audiences basically coming yeah, so up. The kids it. who were born the year came yeah. out are in the seventh grade. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, besides making all of us feel a little bit older than we thought when we woke up this morning, like I'll say this about The Incredibles <laughs> is that when we were doing our, uh, our top 50 superhero movies of all time here at Collider, you start thinking about all your Marvel movies and your DC movies and way back to Superman and Batman 1989. And then The Incredibles is in there. It's like, oh yeah, that's a great superhero movie. And mm. that was one of the, that was a movie that was at the forefront of the modern era that we have because 
because yeah. if you have X Men and Blade that were coming out around like the late nineties, two thousands, and it's like, oh, comic book movies are pretty cool. We have a yeah. lot of CGI we can do with this now. The Incredibles came out and had so much fun with the trope, but it never poked fun at superheroes. No. It just kind of made us embrace them even more. It's three years before Iron Man, so it's. I mean, Incredibles is a great movie. It's by far the best Pixar movie in my opinion, and it holds up a lot better than the, a lot of the other Pixar movies. Like I think like Toy Story sometimes like even like some of the 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 tropes of it are a little bit dated and but like with Incredibles it's like it's still because it sort of does this sort of like half retro half modern thing so it sort of lives in this sort of land in between so it can it'll it'll hold up forever because it's sort of like it's like this 50s looking technology but it's Modern technology, so I love it. Yeah, yeah. it might be, uh, might not be the last time we see The Incredibles have a movie come out because um, if, if if these numbers hold up, then I think that Pixar is going to want to make more Incredibles adventures. Yeah, a little bit faster, maybe they won't wait thirteen years this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't make us wait that long. Or, or yeah. maybe that was a good thing. I mean, think I'll about be on it now. AARP it the next time another Incredibles movie. <laughs> if comes it makes out. so much money, and then the waiting period, maybe the waiting period is kind of a good thing. I mean, I don't know because I I don't. I'm Who's going to wait thirteen years to make? I'm a not saying dollars. thirteen years, but I'm saying like all this time. Time has passed, and now yeah. like we're seeing like the, the benefits. anticipation for this movie is yeah. so high. It's probably going to be the biggest movie this summer besides Infinity War, right? Um, I mean, I, I it think certainly so. has the potential. I mean, you when you look at it at, at the summer box office, and you say, okay, you're going to have a huge comic book movie mm -hmm. like Infinity War was, and then you have a, a kids movie or a movie that family's going to go see. I think The Incredibles is certainly in the running to be number two at the box office. Yeah. Maybe Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom, or a Deadpool or Solo can factor into the top five somewhere. But this movie comes out June fifteenth. And it's a great landing spot for the Incredibles too. Everybody's out for school, out of school, and you know, it's just. A, I think that this movie is going to do very, very well, and the early tracking indicates as such. Well, a movie that we're not sure how it's going to do with the box office yet is at least having a cast rounding into shape, and that would have been v Vin Diesel's spin on Bloodshot. The movie was announced a couple weeks ago. It's based on the comic book where he plays a former soldier who has powers of regeneration, and once he escapes from the lab where they kind of helped him out with all these powers, he has to go find his true identity and hopes that it's about more than just killing. We have new cast members that have been announced to join Vin Diesel in his quest, and that is Baby Driver's Elsa Gonzalez, Outlander's Sam Hewen, and Michael Sheen. They're all in talks right now to join the adaptation of the Valiant comic. They hope to start shooting this movie in July. Ace, I give you these additional names that are in talks to join Vin Diesel. Does this do anything for your excitement for Bloodshot. Yeah, because Bloodshot and Vin Diesel, I'm sorry, it's not enough of a pitch for me to get excited for, mm -hmm. but adding, adding obviously, Eza Gonzalez, who's like an actual Mexican actress that I've been following personally, like Mexico loves her, and she's yeah. like very much like very like powerful in the Latin community, and as someone who's very passionate about the Latin community, she's great. Like she's she's great, obviously in Baby Driver. She's also coming out in Alita Battle Angel, which is like coming out later this year. Um, there's a lot of great Latino actors in that as well. And she's someone who's really, really taking it upon herself to kind of carry the mantle of having more Latina, Latina actresses in mm -hmm. Hollywood. But obviously I'm excited for my homie, Michael Sheen. Michael mm -hmm. Sheen's my boy, man. Yeah. Michael Sheen's, he's, he's a, I just talked about him because we're doing a Ron Howard episode on, we just did a Ron the Howard oh, episode yeah, Fro on Frost Nixon. Cause we saw Frost Nixon again. So good. He's great. He's such a good actor. But obviously I know him as Lucian, mm -hmm. the leader of the vampires and one of my favorite movies ever, mm -hmm. Underworld. One Thank of the you. best movies ever, Underworld. So I, I love Michael Sheen. I will always love Michael I'm Sheen. I'm sorry, I'm looking this up right now. Did you say that one of the best movies One of the ever best movies ever, Underworld. Underworld. It's about <laughs> <know>. an underground <laughs> vampire versus werewolves oh. movie. Oh, oh, I, I Came out in 2003. Um, it is <laughs> yeah. one of the best movies ever. Oh, yeah. Ever. Look it up. <laughs> IMDb has that rating. It's high up there. Uh, high. Clay, I'm going to give you an easier <laughs> question than where does Underworld rank in your best <laughs> movies of all time? And just simply put the question that I just put to Ace to you. Do you think that the Bloodshot movie Movies. Is that a movie that gets you excited anyway? Because it's, it's based not on really comic. on my radar. I'm not a Valiant comic reader. Um, this would be probably a question better suited to my boyfriend Ed. But I do. I I like me some Vin Diesel. I like his voice. Um, I like his back. I'm like I'm, I'm a big fan of backs. So he's got good, uh, good traps. <laughs> he's got good, good traps. Good lats. On that he's got good lats. But <laughs> you're good when you turn that, around. This will probably not be a movie that I will. Pro necessarily see in the theater 
Um, but that being said, I do like to, um, Ace's point, I do like that Latina actors are coming up in this world, that they're being cast in things that wouldn't normally, like, I mean, there's a bunch of, there's, like, we could talk about it, there's another movie we're gonna talk about later, that I love that, like, we're getting unconventional casting choices, and this is another one I think that is suited in that realm. Also, I love me some Michael Sheen. The fact that Sarah Silverman put up with him for a couple of years just makes him, I'm like, he must be awesome. Well, what's great about this is that <laughs> I, I actually have a backstory with Michael Sheen. Did Michael Sheen push me into a pool one time? Oh um, shit! Because we were doing uh, we were doing an episode of Punked, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, and okay. I was uh, we were punking Kate Beckinsale, <laughs> and. Um, uh, it all I, comes together, Mark. Some guy in a red jacket yeah, goes by and, like, and like, kind of like, like, like says some lewd things to Kate, and then he walks by, then I walk by in a red jacket. And mm -hmm. In the meantime, she has told him that, like, oh, somebody's in a red jacket. So he was in on it, and we yeah. worked together really well. And it, uh, you know, punk's not easy. You know why you punk? Yeah, you know I have a Michael Sheen story, too. Oh, um, he shit. knocked over a drink of mine at the comedy store, and he replaced that drink. Aw, what is I <laughs> have a Michael Sheen story, too. You have a Michael Sheen story, sir. Um, I do not. I just saw him in Underworld, and I liked it. <laughs> Okay, but for well. me, you, the reason why you did that, Mark, was because of Underworld, because Kate Beckinsale and Michael Sheen, and obviously they were married, so <laughs> there you go for that. Obviously that didn't work out. Wait, are, um, you, are you attributing my success on the MTV show Punk <laughs> to the fact that Underworld is the best movie of all time? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. credit for my... <laughs> hey, also Bill Hader started in Punk, too. I don't know if you knew that. And now he, Barry's yeah. great. Barry's yeah. a great show. A lot okay, of yeah, I just watched the pilot punk, the other day. As well as me. Yeah, there you go. Good show. Thanks for the time, yeah. MTV. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, so Bloodshot, uh, we don't have a release date yet, but it will uh, hopefully start shooting in July. Uh, our next story, actually our next two stories, are around new trailers that just dropped. The first one is for Upgrade. Uh, it's the NSFF movie. Uh, it's from Saw and Insidious creator Lee Wanell, and it's a sci-fi thriller with a twist. So we get a new Upgrade trailer, but we also got a Red Band trailer. And this movie it's going to have a lot of violence, a lot of cool games a lot of cool technology. This is one of these movies that I think in the midst of a huge summer blockbuster season when you have these gigantic comic book movies, along comes something. Last year, I would give it to Slight because Slight was a movie that really surprised me that had a superhero mm -hmm. element to it. Here, I think this one's got a little bit more oomph behind it and they're really pushing Upgrade as one of those sneaky sci-fi movies that might be the can't miss. You're gonna be talking about this with your friends afterwards. Clee, you got a chance to check this trailer out. Logan Marshall Green is the, the star mm -hmm. of it. Do you think that this movie could be that surprise sci-fi flick of the year? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, after seeing the trailer and reading about what the movie is about and stuff, I do think it definitely has that potential because it's it's interesting. And, I mean, who doesn't love, like, it's sort of like a Punisher-ish type of storyline, um, you know, with with a little bit of a twist. So, you know. Yeah, I like, I like it. that it I mean, did. I'll probably, I might go see this. I'm pretty sure. This is maybe a theater go for you. This might be a theater go just because I would like to see some of what the action is going to be on a big screen. Yeah, it picked up the Midnight Audience Award at South by Southwest, which is given to the movie that, you know, they, they have a lot of late night screenings at mm -hmm. South by Southwest to garner interest for movies that, they that you know, the studios hope will pop from there. And since then, it's been getting a steady string of positive reviews. Ace, do you agree with Klee? Is this a borderline theater going experience it for is, you? Or it, you definitely want it up for this one? No, it's definitely a borderline theater experience for me. I, it's, it's one of those movies... I mean, it's coming out next week. That's mm -hmm. wild, right? I mean, the, the fact that they're, I mean, that's why they're promoting it so much, obviously, but it's Blumhouse, right? And we, you know, usually mm -hmm. trust Blumhouse to make at least decent movies. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, for me, it's kind of like a, everyone's saying it's like the Tony Stark kind of R-rated Jarvis. Mm -hmm. I see it more like a Blue Beetle. Because yeah. there's, there's like a, for anyone who's a comic book fan, Blue Beetle is like attached, it's a scarab attached to his back and, yeah. he, and he asks for control to go full weapons mode. And I kind of like the idea of someone who has a shotgun arm. I don't know why I think that's cool. Yeah, the shotgun arm mode That's like, kind of cool. Interesting. <laughs> it's like, yo, I have a tell shotgun in my arm. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, I was like, that's on that part cool. I was like, tell me more. <laughs> you Did you say shotgun arm? Like when, when he right. armed it, I was like, oh. It's, Go. It's like, all right, all right, I'm seeing it. Like, I want this to be a video game. <laughs> That's a great call. Yeah. Yeah, where you could just sit, you know, you, you walk around. I, I got to play, I got to go to uh, Skydance Studios yesterday mm -hmm. and play um, Archangel Hellfire. Mm -hmm. I mean, it comes out today if you already have Archangel for mm -hmm. Oculus, and it's like one of these like virtual reality experiences. It, you get, because that now all of a sudden I'm in this giant like Jaeger looking thing. It's this huge mech. And to have a movie like this upgrade Ooh, where. If it was an Oculus it's game, the, that would be even better. It's the, the, it's the <laughs> dream is like, you just get to say, hey, you know what? I want to get upgraded now. And I got three guys are in my kitchen and I got to take 
care of him. So mm -hmm. all of a sudden you have all this cool stuff. Upgrade, I think, is going to be one of those movies that like maybe a Cleet Wiggins out of her circle of friends goes to mm -hmm. see or maybe Ace goes to see it. And then all of a sudden you tell your friends, no, y'all need to go see this movie. In a yeah. Theater. yeah, I think this could have week to week traction in the box office and actually have an increase from its opening weekend to subsequent weekends based on what else is coming out, because I think this is going to get really good word of mouth. Yeah, I mean, it could be the next uh, The Guest that everyone I love the, that movie, The Guest, and it's mm -hmm. like a little small, little action contained yeah. movie as well. So it could be. Could it be. could be, yeah. yeah. I think it has potential. It's got legs. Yeah. It's, it's got, got up. It's, it's got, got, it's got upgrade upgrade potential. Shotgun <laughs> legs. Might say. It's, got, it's shotgun got a shotgun legs. arm. And maybe shotgun <laughs> legs too. Well, something that you always get nervous about hearing is that there's a new trailer for a comedy that takes place in the old west. Sometimes it's done great. Sometimes yeah. it's done all time great. I would think about Mel Brooks's Blazing Saddles. Sometimes uh, you get a million ways to die in the west, <laughs> or you get the ridiculous six. And this new movie from Annapurna Pictures that has a great recent track record is called The Sisters Brothers. Others, and it starts Joaquin Phoenix and John C. Riley. They're basically hired guns in the Old West in this new dark comedy. Ace, you checked out the trailer for this one. What's your read on it? It's a dark comedy. There's going to be some action, some intensity here, too. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's Annapurna. It's it's Joaquin Phoenix, one of the best working actors we have. I mean, it also has Jake Gyllenhaal and Riz Ahmed, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's them coming back from Nightcrawler, which is my favorite movie of that year. I love, love Nightcrawler, and I love Jake Gyllenhaal. Mm -hmm. So it seems incredibly promising, but I don't see it really as a comedy. I see it more as like a... I see, it's very Tarantino-y. I don't know if you guys got that vibe yeah, in the trailer. It's right, very like yeah. Django-y, kind of like it has comedic moments, but it's still like violent and kind of like intense kind of feel. That's a great yeah. comparison. Yeah. You see the, the, the I saw the trailer and I got Django vibes as well. Like I, I don't, I agree 100%. Yeah, I mean, Whole, I, I was going to say wholeheartedly and 100 at the same time. Wholeheartedly counts as 100. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the same. I think they're one in the same. Yeah, but yeah. it has that kind of feel to it. So it, it has potential. And obviously, I love the storyline for two brothers. I think that's always kind of fun to have two mm -hmm. brothers kind of going at it. But uh, it has great potential. And the fact that it's a uh, it's Jock's the director is Jock's uh, French director. From Deepin, yeah, Jacques from Arnaud. Deepin. He did Rust to Bone. He's a, he's a film Jacques uh, Odiard. That's, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And he's a film festival kind of darling kind of director that people love. He did Rust to Bone with uh, Marianne Cotillard, another fantastic actress that we yeah. have today. And he's known for making kind of super French, artsy, fun movies that people this enjoy. This is his first English language film, I yeah. think. Do you think yeah. this movie's just, I mean, it, what's, the, what's the audience appeal of a movie like this? Because it's set to come out in the fall, and you know, you, you hear fall and you think, Oscar kind of sneaky one. I think if anything, this could just improve Joaquin Phoenix's chances of getting nominated for uh, "You Were Never Really Here," um, mm -hmm. the or "You Were Never Really There," whatever the movie is called. You're never it's really, it's, it's yeah. really, really good because if Joaquin Phoenix is in a new movie, it's coming out. Mm -hmm. You could talk about oh, he was also in this movie where I think he's going to get nominated, or at least if the Oscars were to happen today, he would be the front runner for best lead actor in a movie because mm -hmm. he is so powerful in that movie. This one, a very different kind. Is is this going to get some traction to the box office? Do you think it's going to be kind I of think it'll be. I think it'll be like a sleeper sort mm -hmm. of type of box office. I don't think it'll be like do monster numbers, but I think it'll do pretty well. I think this could be also be a bid for supporting actors for all three or all four of the guys in there in this movie. Um, because like from what the trailer shows me, it's like Riz Ahmed's character is completely is like not at all what I was expecting. I haven't read the source material, but not at all what I was expecting from him having seen his previous work. So I was like, oh. Interesting. I mean, think about the four actors, though. I mean, Riz yeah. Ahmed, just, I mean, I forgot about the HBO show he did, too. Yeah. He was phenomenal in that. So he I was, think this could be like a four way run for a supporting actor in, uh, for Oscars or Golden Globe or. Because I, I know they're probably going to all submit for the comedy for Golden Globe. Yeah, and it's also the fact, too, that it's Annapurna. Annapurna always like throws in all their chips in for Oscar contention and Academy yeah. Award attention. They always want to get like nominations. They usually don't make movies for box office. Yeah. They usually just put all their chips in to try I to get a nomination. I think this will probably make a, maybe a little bit more money than they were expecting, but not quite that much. Annapurna, they yeah. always go for the rings, just like LeBron. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> in the meantime, a couple quick notes is that we did not get a chance to check out the new Christopher Rock. Robin Cho that dropped this morning, but a new one did drop. Ewan McGregor is in the iconic role of Christopher Rock. He's not playing Obi-Wan. So <laughs> Obi I would actually love to see Ewan McGregor in on Tatooine as Obi-Wan, but Winnie the Pooh is just there. Yeah. He's just kind of hanging out with no. him. And so he's just as crazy like his old chewy. He's like his Chewie to Obi-Wan's Han Solo. Yeah, if Chewie kept bending over yeah. and then ripping his back and having yeah. to put his fluff back in, Eeyore yeah. could be like a member of the Sand People. It'd be a lot of fun to check out. It'd be adorable. Um, I am going to remind you guys at the end of this show, we're going to save some time for your 
live Twitter questions. Go ahead and start tweeting us right now at Collider Video. Use the hashtag Collider Movie Talk. And another piece of news to confirm is that Danny Boyle finally, finally is officially announced as the director of the next James Bond movie production Ooh. is set to start later on this year. Does that get you in the theater, Clee? Yes. Um, I'm, yes. And Daniel Craig is going to be his final turn as James Bond. Yeah. Danny Boyle. Boom, here for it. Danny Boyle, she's here for that. Daniel Craig, you give him one more shot. I love James Bond, and Daniel Craig is my favorite James Bond. Yeah, I've said that many same. times. I think he's the best one. I think he has the most range. I'm all for Danny Boyle doing it. Yeah, they start production in December, I believe. Mm -hmm. And it's. Uh, I'm curious the release date they're going to go for, because I think that's going to be the biggest telling factor as far as tone. Mm -hmm. But I'm hoping they take this final Bond and make it, make it what Casino Royale was. Because mm -hmm. Casino Royale is the best Bond movie ever, in my opinion. So. I mean, that's how I mm -hmm. kind of look at the, the Daniel Craig James Bond movies is that uh, we, we opened with a bank. Casino Royale, I agree, it's among the best Bond movies. Then Quantum of Solace was like, okay, that was a movie. And then Skyfall comes out and it's mm -hmm. like, oh my God, this is great. And then Spectre, yeah. it's like, I, I would prefer to see y'all actually try. I actually, okay, I'm going to liken this sports metaphor coming here, kids. I look at the, the James Bond movies with Daniel Craig, like the Cleveland Cavaliers playing <laughs> in the playoffs Christ. where they take a game and they play great and then they just take a game off. And they're like, ah, yeah. oh, We'll try better next time. We'll get hydrated and take a nap, and we'll show up again. So I think that we're going to try Craig and win this in Cleveland. And Danny Boyle are going to show up. <laughs> Who's the Kyrie in, in all this? Then, huh? Who's the Kyrie in all this? Uh, the Kyrie Irving who went from one thing to another. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, the Tom Cruise because now he's doing Mission Impossible <laughs> movies. I, I, I got nothing for you there. I do have a cool announcement. You can go to Collider.com right now, and we have a special screening coming up of Hotel Artemis, and it's going to be June 4th at the Arclight in Hollywood at 7.30. Anytime we do a screenings of upcoming movies. It's pretty exciting if we announce it at Collider.com because you know you're going to get a Q&A with special guests. Listen to the roster that you're going to get this Q&A after the screening of Hotel Artemis. It's going to feature Jodie Foster, Jeff Goldblum, Sterling K. Brown, Sophia Batella, and writer-director Drew Pierce are scheduled to be at the Q&A. So if you guys want to check that out, head to Collider.com right now. As for me, I'm going to be at the Comedy Store main room tonight. Then next week we have the big Schmodown Live. And then I'm going to be in New York City doing a run of special shows. Here's a promo. Hey everyone, I'm Mark Ellis. I am a comedian and I'm thrilled to announce that I'm going to be headlining some shows in New York City. You can smell me after a show June 7th and 8th. I love the pizza. Uh, I, the rats are real. So I have a brand new hour of material that I'm working on. I will work on that on stage. Like I, It's the only city in the world where you're actually walking and you see a rat and you're looking at eye level. Here's what you need to know. It's Thursday and Friday night at New York Comedy Club. As if that wasn't enough, I'm going to be in Fairfield, Connecticut. That's Saturday, June 9th. You can get tickets at MarkEllisLive.com and just use promo code SCHMOES. It's like a rat could train you in karate. Like, you believe Ninja Turtles more. I get why we need this, but why do we need... What's this? I cannot wait to be in New York City to see you guys. It's fun. Cue the Van Halen! Or whatever free music that's hard rock E. See you soon, New York City slash Connecticut. You can get tickets at MarkLSlive.com. Use the promo code SHMOES. Can't wait to see all your smiling faces on the East Coast in the northern part. Okay, we're going to move on to some live Twitter questions. And the first one, shocker, is centered around the Boba Fett news. It comes from Mac, and he says, With Boba Fett and Obi-Wan both getting spinoff movies, reportedly, what random other one-off character do you want to see get a Star Wars movie next? Lando. You think and I want it. I want a post. Lando. I want a post Jedi Lando. Ooh. Okay. Okay. A post Jedi Lando is Ooh. very interesting because yeah. Lando, as opposed to before the events of the Empire Strikes Back, yeah. he was kind of doing his own thing. After Return of the Jedi, he was probably a little more intertwined with everything going on in the yeah. rebellion. He probably had some business deals he was doing on the side, but we would probably get to see a lot of characters, not just Lando, from Return of the Jedi. Yeah, and since see what their like especially is. since he's not in the, any of the sequels, like he wasn't in Force Awakens or Last or um, Last Jedi. That uh, what's what's he what's he up to now? Do you think we're gonna see Lando in Episode Nine at all? Do you think he's gonna pop up? Oh, possible, possibly. I don't think so, but. I think I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility. Would you not want Donald to, to come back? Oh, I would want I want I yeah age up Donald and make him come back. But because uh, he did a great job, he did a great job pre conk Lando <laughs> pre pre just for me relaxer Lando. Oh, I love it. 
Uh, that's, so, for the, that's for all you. So besides Obi Wan Kenobi, Marcus yes, Ellis. Yes, Ace. We're, we're giving you your Obi Wan movie, but uh, besides that, it could be another movie on Tatooine. It can be a random. I don't know. Tuscan I feel Raider. like uh, it's it's hard to pick a character and to do one off movies. But why? I mean, and he'll get really mad about this. But why not do a young Mace Windu movie? What's up? We have that's interesting. Michael B. Jordan playing a super buff Mace Windu, taking out. Mm. Bad guys. That's not a know. terrible idea. It could be a like mace it. window in training with his purple lightsaber. We can find out how he got the purple yeah, lightsaber. Yeah, get the of the, uh, the purple lightsaber. It's like yeah. everyone has red and green and yellow, but he's got purple. He's right. the only one, man. Well, if and I he's get, the second most powerful Jedi. You mm. guys, you guys are picking very popular Star Wars characters. I'm going to go with uh, some underdogs here. Uh, Bist in the Space Monkey. I think he got off uh, the, <laughs> the planet of Scarif at the end of uh, Rogue One. Oh, he's I think dead. He survived. I think he survived, <laughs> and he survived right here in my heart. You see him. There's a little monkey in there that's still alive, and he's in outer space. I'm also going to go with Salacious B. Crumb, but I think that the spinoff character, I think, would actually. And I made a joke about this five years ago. I really think that a Job of the Hut gangster movie. That was that would be my other choice. Directed by Martin Scorsese would be Ooh. Goodfellas style. <laughs> I want to see the camera angle go into Jabba's palace and follow it like the restaurant scene in Goodfellas. Yeah. I want to see it just follow and I want to go entirely around Jabba's palace. It, I want oh, a whole like hut. Like I want to know the whole like um, hut like does it open like up with origin the, and all that type of stuff yeah. like that? Like, because they are basically the space mafia, the huts. So I would like to see that. Or I would also like, um, oh, geez, I just left my brain. Everybody. I just want to see it open <laughs> up with, uh, ever since I was a little slug, I wanted to be a gangster. Oh, and him, like, yeah. shut up. <laughs> ever yeah. since I was, a, and it's just all oh, subtitles. <laughs> and he's like, blah, 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 and it's just subtitles. Ever since yeah. I was a slug, I wanted to be a gangster. Shuts it. Oh, God, if it's all credits. in hoodies, that would be hilarious. <laughs> and that's what Look, it would be. I, I don't yeah. want to toot my own horn too much, but it's like I kind of just created a movie that allows a lot of other people to be. You could have. I was going to say, Boba Fett could swing by Jabba's house. Boba Fett could. Bo your boy Bosk could, yeah. could, could kind of come yeah. by. Bist in the Space Monk. He's probably doing some dealings with yeah, Jabba. Salacious the Hutt, so B. Crumb. It's a Salacious Crumb. It, yeah. They're all hanging salacious out. Salacious Crumb, with the, the dancer. What's her name? Ooh. Like I don't know her the, name. Um, Which is great. The Falling Dancer. Uh, oh yeah, right before her obvious yeah her obvious demise, but end. like how, how she comes to be dancing at Jabba's palace. I know it, it'd be fun to see Jabba haggle with the Rancor dealer. Yeah, you know, like like I'm, it's a used Rancor. I'm not paying full price <laughs> for this. Thing. But just like, and you could probably with the Falling Dancer, you could hire that same chick because she looks exactly the same forty years later. That's right. Yeah, she yeah she, she, she played herself again in the in the in the reduce and twenty years later. Mm -hmm. uh, Guillermo del Toro wanted to do that movie too. He's hey, been Jabba talking about Jabba the Hutt movie. Jabba the Hutt movie. Oh, Guillermo del Toro would be interesting. And, uh, He'd make it real. I Creepy. highly recommend people looking up uh, Diego Luna talking about Jabba the Hutt. He's like, I want a movie about Yaba. I just really need a movie about Yaba. <laughs> about Yaba. He's, I love his texture. Like, look up. What the soft um, Jay? I love Diego it. Luna, Jabba the Hutt. It's amazing. It's, would, it's one minute I'll, of I'll, I'll do that as soon as we get off air. Yaba the Hutt movie, or if we go 900 <laughs> years uh, in the history of Star Wars, I want to see High School Yoda with a varsity jacket. Until we get mm -hmm. that movie, we move on. Uh, Luis E. De La Pena says, Mark, have you ever used movie? Movie material in your stand-up. I, I talk about movies a lot in my stand-up. <laughs> Clee, you are an accomplished comedian as well. I do it a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of, my, my material is very referency. Um, a I, lot of Star Wars and Star Trek. A lot of Star Wars. I don't delve too deep into the Star Trek. Oh, I have a lot of Star Trek jokes. Uh, I have a lot movies. of jokes about data. <laughs> um, yeah, Data just uh, what a personality on that guy. Well, he's um, the ultimate sex machine. That's what my whole joke is. About. is <laughs> He's, he's just here. He's here for one thing. <laughs> yes. He doesn't feel emotion at all. He yes. just, he's each is there for the pound. Yes, exactly. Good Which for you, Dana. <laughs> he's, he's, that, that guy behind closed doors. Look out, my man. Um, <laughs> our last question in honor of Memorial Day. Do you have a favorite war movie to watch on that holiday or any time um, for Luis? It's uh, Platoon. A few good men, Dunkirk, and Top Gun. Mm -hmm. I looked at Top Gun as a war. I guess uh, Top Gun can be okay, considered yeah. a war. I love me some Top Gun. Yeah. Uh, a few good men, uh, me and Freddie Prince Jr. As far as I know, are the two greatest of all time at quoting a few good men. <laughs> we love that movie. Yeah. We will text each other quotes often. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I, I think that. Saving Private Ryan obviously is one. Uh, Wind Talkers is one that doesn't get mentioned up mm -hmm. there with the best war movies of all time. But I think it certainly deserves. It shows merit. a really. It shows. It gives recognition to a very underrecognized group. Mm -hmm. A group of men. So I like Wind Talkers. My favorite is Hunt for Red October. Oh, it's a good one. Yeah, yeah, me and Kevin Avery like quote that movie to each other a lot. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a good. We kicked like, off the Tom Clancy. Uh, yeah, you we know, big screen that, yeah. craze. 
Yeah, I, I speak a little bit of Russian because of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ace, what do you got? I mean, you took a lot of them, Mark. I mean, I don't want to say you I'm did. Just, I'm just reading off the tweet. They're just, <laughs> no, you know. Saving Private Ryan's great. Um, a recent one that came out, I believe, 2016, was Hacksaw Ridge. I still think that movie's great. I know a lot of people didn't care for it. I thought it was great. I think it's a really yeah. solid war movie. My brother is a veteran. He's a veteran of the Marines, and his favorite is Jarhead because uh, he's like, that's the most accurate portrayal of what it's like to to do that because he was he was an EOD specialist in the Marines and he's like that's exactly what it is that's why I couldn't watch that movie like because that movie came out when he was deployed and I was like I refuse to watch it while he's deployed and I watched it like maybe a year and a half ago because he retired a couple of years ago so I was like I can finally watch Jarhead now. yeah I had a good friend who was uh, who, who was in the army uh, she was uh, flying helicopters in the army and <laughs> and, and she, she's back now but she um, she was deployed at the time the movie Stop Loss came out oh, gosh. and the whole thing about Stop Loss is like you think you're done with your tours and then yeah. they say no no we, we actually have this thing this loophole we can send you back for one more tour and I was like oh my god this is, it's a tough movie to watch but um, yeah war movies uh, you know hopefully they do a good job of portraying what it actually is like giving all of us civilians just a little glimpse into the day to day of what our brave men and women of this country do um, they lay their lives on the line for us and I want to wish all of them a happy Memorial Day and everybody enjoy your long weekend go see some solo go see some Deadpool enjoy the movies we're going to have a special episode of movie talk on Monday then we're back live on Tuesday Ace and Cleese thank you all so much for joining us today. Yeah. Clee, where can all the my, kids find you? My pleasure being here. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Clee the Pimp. There's a reason for the pimp, so just don't don't at me about that. But at Clee the Pimp on Twitter, at Clee the Pimp SF on Instagram. At Clee the Pimp, and you know her from her Mandalorian style purse. Yeah. Ace <laughs> Andres Cabrera, The Meaning of Podcast. You and RB3 doing a yeah. great job with that show. Come support The Meaning of Podcast, man. Give us a chance. <laughs> we were talking about our favorite directors, and we highlight all of their films. We usually try to do all their films. We just did Ron Howard, so come check that out. We're doing George Lucas next week, so we're going to be talking about all the prequels. Come come home for the prequels, guys. <laughs> uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Squad Leader Ace as well. Squad Leader Ace, Clee the Pimp. I am merely Mark Ellis Live, and my Twitter handle is not that creative. Thank you guys for <laughs> tuning in and see all the comedy store tonight or later on this weekend. Have a great weekend, everybody. Hey, everybody. Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode of Collider Movie Talk. You want to watch more? Then click up here, or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. And if you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.